Good start to the stream as always. There we go. All right. And we should be good. So hopefully. Uh, How about now? Is that better? Sorry if I deafened everybody with uh, good headphones. There we go, how about five? All right, Ajvan is on the sound. We got, we got this teamwork uh, is, is, gonna, is gonna be somehow how we do it. Um, all right. <laughs> Let me scroll back up. Should we start again? Shall I re-roll the intro and, uh, and see how we're doing? Um, good to see you all. And uh, it feels like it's been a while, but actually I've been on holiday. Uh, I was away for the long weekend, so that's probably why it feels like ages ago since we, uh, since we did a live stream. 
And uh, I don't know if you can see, I've got Pops here. She's kind of behaving. So she can stay for the time being. She's just being like all cute and rolling on her back. And uh, we'll see if she decides to go crazy later on. So, um, so yeah, all good. All right, uh, let me see if I can fix this audio. I don't know what's going on with the audio recently. It uh, seems to be a little bit crazy, but. All right, so hopefully that's okay. Let me know if um, if it's still if it's still terrible. We'll just switch it off, and then and then we'll see how it goes. Um, maybe I need to like switch on auto gain or something like this. On uh, maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know if you can hear me a little bit better now, but um, not sure. Um, all right, so what are we doing today? Let me uh, let me switch over and and show you guys what we're doing. Uh, we spent ages trying to get the music to work earlier, and then gave up, and then decided to do this, and then it's still not working. So uh, at least not working as intended. So let me come to here. Come to main. All right. So if you want to follow along. Because I know some of you guys do. Um, this is the box that we're we're working on today. So we're going to be working on on cat pictures too. So um, feel free to load it up. Um, let's see. Is it a? It's a free room. So all you need is an account on TryHackMe, and you can sign up, and then we can solve this uh, solve this together. So that's what we'll be looking at in like I don't know 10, 15 minutes. Let's see how we go. All right, um, can we earn CEUs? Ah, good question. Unfortunately, probably not. <laughs> Maybe that's something that we can look into though, because um, that would be cool. That would be awesome uh, if we could. Um, let me come over here and... Oh, this is a good question. Okay, so I'm studying for PMPT right now. Is it wise to stay focused on network pen testing after the PMPT and become proficient before moving into web app pen testing? Yeah, this is a good question because I feel like if you have web app skills, that's going to make you more hireable. Um, so I think PMPT, you know, should be enough to to land your job. So personally, I think you you should supplement it with some with some web testing. But if you're really dead set on network penetration testing, then maybe don't worry about it too much. Um, I know that's kind of like a either is okay. And I think in this case, either there are there are pros and cons to both. But I think learning like the the fundamentals of web app pen testing is definitely gonna be make you more useful to an employer. And so I think you'll probably be a little bit more successful. And picking up the foundations doesn't take that long, whereas going deep into like network pen testing is like a long journey. So you can you can do that quite quickly, so I think that's that's the uh, that's what I would do for sure. Um, oh, too new to know how to follow along. Yeah, so if you want to start out, um, your best bet is if I come here, uh, Heath's video. Um, obviously, you can subscribe to the academy, and uh, oh, I've got the timer. Oh no, I'm on the wrong one. Hold on. There we go. I'm on this screen. <laughs> I have different setups for, for different streams. Um, this ethical hacking in 15 hours, this is a good place to start. If you do this course, you'll be able to follow along the streams. No problem. Because it's going to teach you all the tools and like fundamentals and phases and things like that. So um, I know it's a tall order, 15 hours of, of content. But um, uh, but yeah, that should be OK to, to get you started. All right. Um, what else do we have? Let me let me come back here. Oh, Chameleon was asking my go-to English meal: which bit is Yorkshire pudding versus bangers and mash? Um, I mean, you can have bangers and mash in a Yorkshire pudding, which is a uh, toad in the hole, right? So you can have the best of everything. That could be. That could be the way to go. Um, I think steak and ale pie is a good one. 
if um, if you did, you know, if you were, if you were looking for something, or, or maybe a shepherd's pie or cottage pie or something like this, I think is is probably pretty good. I did see some talk both on Discord and on the work Slack. They're like the TCM Slack. I uh, talk about Taco Bell, um, something like Taco Tuesday, which I think is something that we should adopt in the UK. Because. <laughs> I love tacos. Who doesn't? Of course. Um, but good question. All right, let me come down to the bottom. Ah, prerequisites. Okay. Easy level and medium on try hack me. Okay, so try hack me has some paths, right? If we come back here and if I come to my mainstream. Okay, here we are. Uh, if we come back to try hack me. And if we come to learn and then we have these learning paths right so if you didn't work in like a tech job or anything at all before then i think the pre-security is a good place to start but uh but if you want to dive straight in i think the junior pen tester course um this pathway is quite good and this should teach you enough to be able to start um oh where am i sorry i clicked on it but it didn't yeah here we are so this this i think takes you up to uh like solving easy boxes um even though it says difficulty intermediate i think like this covers a lot of fundamentals and yeah you can see a lot of web stuff and a lot of ctfs especially the easy and, and medium ones um have a lot of web in terms of the initial shell or the initial access and so i think this takes you up to about easy so that's where I'd start. And then progressing from easy to medium boxes is just just do lots of boxes. And that's, you know, and if you get stuck, have a look at a write up. Don't spend more than an hour or so on a box. I mean, if you're like completely stuck, have a peek at the write up, see what you missed and then and then continue with the box. Don't read the whole write up uh, all at once. I think that's the way to go. Um... Got oh, loads of questions today. This is awesome. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, good luck with the exam. So uh, I've already finished the bug bounty course. I'm now going to take the P, um, PJWT exam. Any advice? So everything you need is in the course, right? So sometimes I'll read reports um, from people who have done the exam and they'll be testing for like I don't know, like race conditions or something. And we don't cover that in the course. So we're not, you're not expected to be tested on it. Um, so, uh, but my main piece of advice is try and understand how the application works. Like think about what it's trying to do and, you know, think about why functional ex functionality exists and, you know, try and follow through the flow as a user. Don't rush it. Be like, understand the application and then exploitation is easy. And, you know, if you're methodical, that also helps too. That would be my biggest, um, biggest advice, I think, um, for sure. Because web apps are, you know, every web app is unique, right? So as a web app tester, you always want to be trying to understand what's, what it's trying to do. What, what did the developers intend, right? So. Oh, oh, cool question. I, this is actually like a really like good topic, like passionate topic of mine. Um, so any tips for maintaining a healthy work-life balance? I've been finding it hard to stop looking at alerts, especially being at a new job. Probably need to find hobbies away from the screen. Yeah, I think so. So um, a, a lot of work-life balance depends on your situation, right? So I'm quite lucky. I have, you know, remote, flexible working. Um, if I don't feel like getting out of bed for a few hours and, you know, sleep in, I can do. And if I want to work in the evening, I can do that. So that that really helps. Um, and I would say use that, but don't like overuse it. Don't just, you know, sleep in because you can try and have some discipline. Um, I think hobbies away from the screen. So for me personally, I think it's important to try and at least like I try and leave the house every day because, um, you know, sunlight's good for you. Exercise is good for you. Um, I try and eat somewhat healthily. Um, so for example, uh, every day at lunchtime, I have something healthy and then dinner, I'd, you know, whatever I want. So that kind of like helps establish some kind of baseline rather than just being unhealthy all of the time. Um, so I think, yeah, just small habits of like have at least one healthy meal a day, try and leave the house once a day. 
uh, if you can, you know, a little bit of exercise, that definitely helps. And I think all those things, even if it's just like 20 minutes or something like this, um, that has a big impact on, on like your mood and, and your motivation and, and things like that. So, um, but if you can with the new job, um, there's always that like start period where it's quite busy. Um, you know, I, I would say it depends on your situation, but don't say yes to everything. You know, only say yes to things that you think, ah, oh, this is going to be great or I'm going to learn something new. Don't do loads of extra work just because you're the new person. So hopefully that that makes sense. Um, I know there's a lot of ifs and buts in there, so sorry about that. But um, but yeah, um, little things stack up a lot. And I think like for me, leaving the house every day, <laughs> I went through a period of never leaving the house for like, I don't know, a week or two weeks. And that was really pretty bad for me. Oh, um, all right let me keep scrolling down yeah so the live recordings are on youtube so if you come to the cyber mentor youtube channel um which is here and i know different people are tuning in from different platforms everything's on here and i think it'll probably be on um on linkedin as well uh, I'm not sure exactly how LinkedIn stores uh, store stuff, but uh, it's probably there. It's all good. Um, lots of great questions. All right, let me scroll up a little bit. My preferred setup. So my preferred setup for everything is I have my VMs, my main VMs set up um, in VMware on, on my PC. Um, and then I have a separate box with Proxmox on it. Um, and I know you said for, for bug bouncy, but um, Proxmox, I have like my Active Directory labs, um, all of my, um, all of the labs and CTFs that I built, all the random containers and stuff, running web applications, outdated versions of WordPress, um, stuff that I was doing research on, code review, all of that is on like a, a Proxmox instance. Um, so yeah, that's basically how I run everything. But yeah, locally, I just run like a few versions of Kali uh, and a version of Debian because I use Debian mostly for hacking. Um, but I use Kali for like streaming and, and content and stuff like that. So so that, that kind of works. I think definitely virtual machines are the way to go, 100%. Uh, I dual booted years ago, but I use so many different VMs. It's It's too much effort to dual boot, I think, these days. Um, got a lot of interviews for this week, but all our non cybersecurity positions. Um, yeah, I think you've got to weigh up the pros and cons. So for example, if it's a technical role that you might be able to learn more about, like develop your PowerShell skills or some other skills, then definitely I'd consider it. Um, but if you're really wanting a cybersecurity position so that you're not like continuing looking, then it might be worth holding off, especially if like, you know, if it's not like a pay rise or if it's not, if it's not a hell yes, then it's probably a no. That's, that's my general thing. But if, if the market is difficult and it's difficult to find opportunities, then it might be, it might be worth going for it. So hard to say really, but um, think about like in a year's time, you know, where would you be in that role uh, if you got offered it? Would you be in the same position? If so, then it's probably not worth the effort and hassle. Um, but if you would be a year of like, you've developed some skills in, I don't know, like system administration or something like this, then it might be worth it for sure. So think of like, think a year ahead and then maybe like two years ahead and, and try and try and figure it out that way. I think that's the best way to do it. Um... How realistic is it to expect to find a cybersecurity job remote from a different country? Is it easier for certain positions? So, I mean, I'm in a cybersecurity job remote from a different country. So I would say for me, obviously, I, I managed to do it. But um, to be honest, I wasn't looking for, uh, I, I don't look for types of roles generally. I look for um, interesting roles. So when I saw Heath's post, where it was like, hey, we want like a, a content creator um, and also like somebody to build training courses and things. 
I'd been doing a lot of that already. So I'd been teaching um, and building courses at my previous company uh, and also managing some teams and doing some other stuff um, and doing AppSec stuff basically. Um, and then I thought, oh, that'd be a cool, um, exciting role. And so I applied specifically for the company and for the role, not necessarily because it was ro remote and not necessarily because it was to a different country. So it depends on you what your priorities are. Um, but I think for like SOC positions and pen testers in the UK, it's relatively easy to find remote roles, but I don't know about other countries. Um, I see a lot of like recruiters, like looking, like asking for like, like um, advertising remote roles in the UK. So, so yeah, I th it depends where you are, but it's definitely possible a hundred percent. Which TCM course would help me do try hack me CTFs or in particular CTFs? Easy. So yeah, I think the um, practical bug bounty is probably a good one for easy CTFs. It's going to teach you all the web stuff and most easy CTFs have web stuff, but it doesn't cover everything. It doesn't cover like file shares and CVEs and, and stuff like that. So there's not really a single course, but PH and practical bug bounty are probably the best two to get you started, I think, for sure. Um, hey Alex, are you good with Java systems? Nope. <laughs> I'm terrible with Java. Java's like my nemesis. Um, maybe in the future we expect a box with Java based application. Yeah, we'll definitely do some Java. And actually I have some um, colleagues who are like really, really strong um, Java skills engineering skills whatever whatever um and i'll have them on at some point uh for sure so um yeah unfortunately java is just not my jam uh i just never got around to uh really playing with it too much node.js and and php are my my current things so so yeah um What do I think that I'm the most underrated TTP um, in my personal bag of tricks is something I'd be willing to share? Tricky question. Um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> That's uh, a good question. I'm gonna have to think about it. I'm gonna put this one aside and I'll think about it because I do have some cool stuff to share, but it would take a long time to go through and like, you know, I have a few attacks and things like that, that not, I know that not a lot of people try, especially when it comes to like web apps and especially when it comes to um, like Privesk as well, because those are like the areas that I really like. Um, I'm going to come back to your question because <laughs> I need to think about it uh, for sure. I also have a few uh, like EDR bypasses that I don't think are commonly used, at least like I've never seen anybody else writing about them and they're kind of in my bag of tricks and maybe I should report them to the vendor, but you know, that's on them. Um... Which TryHackMe rooms are best for PJPT? I think the Active Directory ones. So he, uh, Heath, uh, Reith, <laughs> not Heath. <laughs> of course, Heath's content is good for, for PJPT. It's not surprising. Um, Reith, Hollow, uh, stuff like that, I think. Yeah, the networked AD machines are, are the way to go, for sure. Uh... Bug bounty, is it worth it in 2024? I think so. I think if you're really into it, it's worth it. If you're willing to put the time in, it's worth it. Um, if you're just going to dabble like an hour a week, then it's not worth it. But I think if you're like, if you've got like three hours a day and you can, you know, or you can put in like 10 to 15 hours a week minimum, I think bug bounty in 2024 is worth it um, for sure. A cloud security, of course, is a like increasing field. So it's um, becoming, you know, more and more popular as, as more and more of our infrastructure moves to the cloud. So 100% can't go wrong if you're um, if you want to up your pen testing game. Um, 
learning cloud skills. I think that was in my latest video, if I recall. All right, if you haven't checked it out, if you didn't like my video already, it's this one. So it's like the um, boost your career video. And uh, oh, there's a stealth jet there. <laughs> I think I talk about cloud security and and um, and some other things like um, uh, PowerShell scripting and stuff like that. Useful skills that you know sometimes people skip over, including myself, that I think will put you ahead of other other candidates. So, so that's probably a good one to uh, to check out. How are we doing for time? All right, so let's take a few more questions and then we'll dive into this box. Um, Ooh, off topic, but looking for some topics to choose for my undergrad thesis, something related to web app pen testing. That's not off topic. Web app pen testing is what we're here for, yo. <laughs> um, I don't know, like, what does everybody think? Well, what would be a good topic for an undergrad thesis for web app pen testing? Um, hmm. Desync attacks. <laughs> that would be cool. Um, I mean, of course, you could do something with AI. That would be fairly easy. Code review is underrated, especially when you're using like um, uh, not just like oh, you're looking for like eval, for example, where you look through like branches of code and you look for structures. That's quite a good topic, I think, uh, or area of research. Because I think SEMGREP does that. Um, What else? Um, fuzzing techniques. I don't think people fuzz enough uh, for research for, for web app vulnerabilities. And I think the current fuzzes are difficult to set up. And I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about like um, like Turbo Intruder or, or like um, uh, or Intruder or like WFuzz. I'm talking about like proper fuzzing, um, how you would fuzz um, software to find um, yeah, vulnerabilities that way. So I think fuzzing for web apps is kind of like not as well developed as it should be. Um, yeah, I'm sure some other people in the chat can think of some good topics. Tricky one off the top of my head. Um, a new way to do content discovery because um, Currently, we do like directory busting, and sometimes we're like recursive, and it takes a really long time to find one directory, and then another, and then another. And then we also have roots. So if you don't have the whole root, um, you're you're not going to find the endpoint. So in APIs, we tend to use Kite Runner, and then a list of roots. But sometimes roots can be completely random. So maybe a way of detecting roots, or a way of crawling roots over the internet, or extracting them from applications, that would be a cool cool bit of research, routing protocols, or like routing um, methods, um, web architecture, uh, pros and cons of like uh, microservices versus um, uh, like MVC and, and other patterns. That would be an interesting piece of research in the, when you build a microservice ap application, what's it actually gonna be vulnerable to versus um, other like design patterns and, and architectures. And that's just my, random thoughts <laughs> cool areas that i think will be fun um if you have time for sure um let me take a couple more questions uh how do i feel about gwapt from giac uh that's the sans one isn't it uh hold on let me because i can't remember the acronyms uh gwapt GWAPT check. Um, web application penetration. To, uh, if it costs more than like a thousand pounds, it's not worth it for sure. Um, I think it's yeah. Sans. If if your organization is paying, Sans is great. If you're paying for yourself, the value, like in terms of return on investment, is like ridiculously low. So. You're not going to find any contents that you don't find anywhere else. Although, like the benefits of a course is things are nicely curated and you'll build skills, but you'll also build similar skills elsewhere for a fraction of the price. So, so if you're if your org is sending you there, do it 100%. But if you're paying out of pocket, do five other courses and enjoy five times as many certifications and all the benefits that come with that. So there's nothing special about SANS. I've done SANS courses and they're good courses, but
but then they're, they're not any different than you know other providers if that makes sense uh, i'm also not a fan of like a week-long boot camp because honestly after like a day after your boot camp you'll have forgotten everything anyway so you know that's not an effective way to learn and we know that through science believe it or not consistency not cramming uh cramming for exams doesn't work except for the day of the exam it doesn't go into your long-term memory so so for building skills from that perspective 100 percent not worth the work the the uh the price tag i'm being a bit mean to sans sorry sans i do like your courses but i think they're ridiculously priced um all right let's take one more question and then we'll do a box so do, 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 do. oh yeah if you can do on demand i think um as aaron white just said yeah if you can do on demand and like paste it and go back and like you know really absorb the information this is this is the way to go 100 percent for sure um let me scroll up a little bit I have a question. Okay, last question. I'm Scooty enthusiast, but I didn't learn in a structured order. I just randomly learn and practice stuff. Now as I'm going to complete uh, college, I'm nervous about the career. To be honest, we're all learning every day. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, I mean, if you're really worried about it, just follow a course and try and fill in some of the gaps. But there's always going to be something that, you know, you don't know. There's always going to be gaps in your knowledge. There's gaps in everybody's knowledge. So, um, so I won't worry about this too much. Um, you know, just uh, enjoy, enjoy your career. That's the trick. All right, let's get this box started. Uh, let's come here. Uh, cat pictures too. Oh, I need to log in. Hey, where's my username and password? No. All right, hold on. I thought it was saved. Um, let me just grab my password manager. Uh, try hacking. You can all see my old streaming email address. Enjoy. I don't ever check it, so spam it as much as you like. And... That's quite a secure password, isn't it? It's just password, 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 password. No, it's not really. <laughs> it's not really. It's a randomly generated. Oh, nothing to see here. This is a great application design. You log in and you get a 404. Wonderful. That's that's what I wanted to do. Oh, some things may look different. And that was February 2020. Wonderful. Notifications from years ago. Sigh. This is why security people are terrible developers. And, you know, this is uh, every um, uh, like platform is, is proof of that, including Hack the Box. The Hack the Box UI is just, it blows my mind how it doesn't even crash people's computers because it's just so much stuff everywhere. I'm in a really weird mood tonight. I'm, I'm just dissing everyone. Sorry about this. I love everyone, but I'm just, just dissing different companies. Don't all hate me. Um, let me come back to comments, see how you're doing. Hey, don't leak my password on live stream. It's pew, 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 pew. <laughs> it's not, it's actually this, but with a one on the end. <laughs> and then I once had to update it, so now it's a two. <laughs> and then, uh, and then it's all good. Um, let me see if I have my VPN. Are we connected? Oh, this might be, I might need to re-download the, uh, uh, what? So right, so it says access machines and it gives you this thing, but actually it doesn't, you actually need to come to here, come to access and then download it here. Why, why? What, how is that, like, good UI? Okay. I'm just in complaint mode today. It's 
try this. And then let's refresh. We're still not connected. Maybe it's going to take a minute. I'm not sure. What's going on here? I think. Uh, no, this is opened. Okay. Oh yeah, we got ten ten zero zero. That's what we want. And then we got ten ten one ninety. I think it's just being slow. Not sure why it's not thinking I'm connected. Let's see if we can ping this box. We can ping the box. We're good. Let's just leave it at that. We won't worry about the uh, <laughs> the green button. We're all good. Um, oh yeah, I do have I do have YouTube as well. But you can find it if you if you. Oh no, it's not on my link tree. But it's the same as like AppSec Explained, I think. I'm gonna stream Friday, I think. I have zero, I have one video, I think, on my YouTube channel. If we go to people. Wait, I'm not famous enough to come up in the search. Oh, there's Louis from uh, Pentester Lab. I like him. Uh, why can't I find it? I don't know. Anyway, it's under AppSec Explained. You can, somebody will find it somewhere. It's, it's all good. Um, let's run Nmap. I realize I spelt pictures wrong, so, you know, it's fine. Everything's fine today. Uh, you know what it is? I spent like two days surfing and my brain is just frazzled. Um, hey, what's up, Dan? How you doing? Good to see you in the chat as always. Um, what's my, <laughs> since I'm all about the controversial opinions today and I'm, I'm dissing everyone, um, what's my opinion on OSCP? I think the, the course itself, I think is quite rough. Um, and I don't think there's, you know, if, if you're dedicated and you go through the PDF, it's okay, but you have to have a lot of motivation. You have to really want it. So from like a pedagogy, like point of view, from a teaching learning perspective, it's kind of low. Um, and there's a lot of like random old stuff in there that maybe could be updated as well. Um, and the f like, I know it's changed now with Active Directory, but when I did it, they just added an AD section and it was like, welcome to Active Directory. We're going to build some random scripts to just like enumerate some random users. And it's like, well, how does that help me? Because I still don't understand how Active Directory works, right? So things like that. I think there was a lot of teething issues with that section. Um, but the exam, I actually really liked the exam. I had a lot of fun. Uh, on the OSCP exam. So I think the exam is excellent, but I think the learning materials are kind of, has a lot to be desired. That's um, that's my, my opinion on OSCP. It does teach you good troubleshooting skills though. Um. Oh yeah, if you if you're like so, I, when I stream randomly on my own channels, I I stream to like LinkedIn and Twitch and stuff as well. So you guys can uh, catch me anywhere, basically, anywhere that's normal. Not on not on TikTok though. I'm not on TikTok. Um, I haven't done the CDSA yet, and I haven't looked at the materials, but um, my DFIR and a few other people that I've spoken to have said it's really good. Um, so I think it's having talked to like blue teamers and, and analysts that are in, in the world of um, DFIR, they said it's really good. So I'm going to pass on. I trust them and say, hey, it's really good. So definitely worth checking out. Have I taken PMPT? Yes, I cleared PMPT uh, not that long ago. <laughs> PMPT was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, probably the most realistic uh, pen test I've ever done. Like the closest to like what it's actually like in the real world to do a pen test, which is pretty cool. 
Um, all right, so we've got 80 open. Um, Nginx. Robots. Uh, so we're disallowed on data, dist, docs, PHP, plugin, source, uploads. So this makes it look like there's a framework here because, you know, how, especially having like the docs folder, uh, a lot of devs just building a small PHP app probably wouldn't have like a docs folder and a distribution folder. So we're probably working with framework. We have lychee. There's a dot git um, repository found, which is nice. So we might be able to git dump. Um, oh, and there's like a, yeah, there's this lychee.git that goes to there. PHP application. Then we've got SSH. We've got 3000 open, which is usually the things like Flask or Python web servers. Well, Python, all right, Flask runs on Python, right? But, um, but stuff like that. And 8080 also, simple HTTP server. There's quite a lot of known exploits for simple HTTP server, especially that's quite an old version. So that's interesting. And then we've got all these footprint stuff, fingerprinting stuff. Okay, cool. Lots to look at. So, oops. Sorry, I'm just trashing my desk at the same time. Um, where's my IP address? So just heads up, I've not done this box before, so we'll see how far we get. It should be fun. Um, sudo vim etc hosts. And what's the box called? Cat pictures dot. I think it's cat pictures too, so we'll just keep it at that. Oh, there's a cute cat here. Oh, I like this effect where you hover and it like splits open. That's quite cool. Uh, so hosted with lychee. So here, um, because a lot of people are asking me about um, easy CTFs. So obviously I've, I've scanned the box. There might be other stuff because we've only scanned the top thousand ports. But for now, that gives us enough to look at. And so what I think is, I think about this application. It's running on this thing called Lychee. So I might go and have a look to see whether there's a known exploit for Lychee. Um, I think about what other directories exist within the application. So what like... I mean, I can check out robots.txt, but is there like slash login.php slash admin.php? Um, if we come to docs, this might give us the version. Uh, we get forbidden, unfortunately, but we might be able to access uh, something in the subdirectory here. Um, there might be a vulnerable plugin. Um, there might be something left by the administrator in in uploads, for example. Yeah, we can't, we don't have like directory listing to those directories, but um, these are all kind of like things that I think about. So what information exists? How can we find it? Um, and the application itself, is it vulnerable to something? So let's... Oh my God, there's so many cats. Okay. I'm just going to be super distracted. What is this? So we can share album. So we get this like share link. So this might be something interesting. We've got this info here. Public, yes, hidden, no, downloadable, password. Maybe if there's injection and there's a password here, maybe we can steal that password and maybe it's a reused password from a known user or an admin, for example. So that's kind of something that I would think about when I'm when I'm poking around. Um, and then what if we, yeah, if we, we get this like um, carousel and yeah, we can go see the full photo. This is a little CTF here, I think. Note to self, strip metadata. So I think this is kind of giving us a pointer. So when you're doing a CTF, looking out for stuff like this, note to self, strip metadata. This means take a look at the metadata in this image. So we're going to do that. Um, uh, we could do that with EXIF tool, but let's take a quick look at what else we have uh, on the box before we do that. So we've got 3000 open. Because I suspect we'll get something in there. Oh, we got Kitty. Okay. Um, cool. This is basically like GitHub. Um, so it's like a repository management, code management, branches, everything else based on Git. So um, if you didn't know, like Git is um, it's like a code management system, I suppose, or a way of managing code. Um, and then you have platforms like GitHub, GitLab, Kitty. 
Um, uh, uh, Gogs? Is Gogs one? I can't remember. Um, loads of different platforms that basically um, run with Git. So maybe we can sign in our username or email address. We could try some basic stuff like admin admin. And we've also got this warning here. So your URL, um, URL in the app.ini, it's localhost 3000, but we're using the address. So it's just saying fix that, I think, but that's probably not a big deal. Maybe we can create a username. Let's see. There might be a public repository in here that we can access. Uh, I can't see any, so. But creating a free account and logging in is is sometimes worthwhile. Nothing too exciting. Okay, let's sign out of that. And again, we might look at the version uh, and then Google and then see whether we have... Um, oh, we can see the version down here, 1.17.3. So we might see whether there is an exploit for this, for example, like an injection or somewhere where we can uh, take over an account that already exists. All right, so what else do we have? 8080 as well. Gosh, there's a ton to look at. Welcome to NGINX. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Just like the standard NGINX homepage. Um, just for fun, let's fuzz this quickly. Um, uh, dash u, http colon slash slash, 8080, fuzz, word list, user share, derb, ah, uh, no. Word lists, tab. Let's just. So, if we want to try and find like hidden content that's you know beyond here, we can just do this. Um, do this fuzzing. I should probably add like .php and some other things, but just doing this as like a demo. If I didn't find anything, um, or if I wanted to be efficient, I'd probably kick this off against all of the web services. Um, the fact that this one is a framework, probably better to just go to the GitHub page and have a look at the structure rather than trying to fuzz it, but you might find something when you fuzz it as well. So let's actually take a quick look. LIG GitHub. <laughs> yeah, here we are. <laughs> so this might not be the same version, but a great looking, easy to use photo management system. So for example, if we come into, uh, oh, it's like a config here app.php we might be able to find some interesting stuff and then maybe we can access it on the web server not sure but it's sometimes worth coming in and taking a look um, at the repository and also looking at like um, what issues what open issues there are so or if there are any um, uh, known vulnerabilities and, and things like this so here we have SQL injection in explain DB queries so this might be something that we want to explore, for example. Um, Lychee installation 4.9.3 uh, to 5.0.1. And I can't remember what version this is. Uh, did it tell us? Maybe it's in the source? Maybe it's in the docs? Not sure, but something worth investigating anyway. So. Anyway, let's take a look at the metadata in this. So let's save this image. Um, I'm just going to call this cats.jpg. Pop it in my downloads folder. Uh, oh, exif tool. And then um, downloads. Oops. What did I call that? I did not save that in my downloads folder. Where did I save that? Save image as. Oh, it's in CTF's pilgrimage. Okay. Let's put it in my downloads folder. Uh, it's that F5 one, isn't it? So we can see, have a look at the data and see what's inside of here. So, anything interesting? Ah, okay, I can see one thing. I can give you all a minute. Have a read of this EXIF data. So this is the metadata stored within the image. And tell me if you see anything interesting in here. Uh, 
This is a, a cool idea, but very situational. And also because we're doing a CTF, usually we don't look for cross-site scripting because cross-site scripting would require like user interaction. So if we want to steal a cookie, for example, we'd need the admin to actually trigger our payload, like log in or read a message or something like that, or like view the image if that was our delivery mechanism. So um, definitely an attack kind of like worth knowing if you're working with uh, an image management platform and you can somehow get um, XSS. Um, but for, for CTFs, I, I generally ignore XSS, but cool idea for sure. Um, the title, wait, the title, what, what, what's happening with the title? No, didn't, did I, did I demo the, uh, popping a shell with Finwalk? <laughs> I can't remember. I saw it at Black Hat. It was quite cool. How to troll, uh, researchers. Oops. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So title with, yeah, this one. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I thought you meant like the title of the image, um, which was F505. So if you said title, you're all spot on, um, props to you people. And sorry for being like, what are you talking about title? hundred <laughs> percent. So yeah, this is, um, we found some interesting metadata here. So this is 8080. Uh, is that? What was running on 8080? NGNX? Yeah, we were never going to fuzz this um, this random string. This looks like a hash. It's probably MD5 of like, I don't know, cheese or something. Let's see if it is. Oh, I hate captures. 9 UKZ 6 T. Ah, yeah. <laughs> There you go, a little Easter egg. The uh, it's the hash of high. That's the um, that's it. That's what that hash is. Hello, uh, box creator. Nice, nice little quack. Um, so note to self: I set up an internal Gitty instance uh, to start using uh, infrastructure as code for this server. Uh, it's quite a basic state, but I'm putting the password here because I will definitely forget. Note to self, don't ever put passwords on web servers <laughs> or anywhere that's not like your password manager, but never mind, it's a CTF. So, um, so Gitty's port 3000, Samarium, and a password. And the Ansible runner, Olive Tin, is on port 1337. So I don't think that came up in our scans because 1337 isn't like a standard web port. Oh, sorry, a standard like top 1000 ports. Looks like we have um, whatever this is. Reason she on GitHub Olive Tin documentation. What is this? Olive Tin gives a safe and simple access to predefined shell commands. Okay, there is no safe access to predefined shell commands when we're on external facing systems, but that's okay. Okay, cool. So we've got run backup scripts, ping host, run Ansible playbooks, slow scripts, broken scripts. Okay. And we also have these creds, which look like they're for Gitty. So let's take a look at this. Let's sign in here. Yeah, slash Ansible. Let me zoom out a little bit. Oh, we got our first flag. Okay, nice. That's what we want. Good little flags. Oh, I deployed the VM. No answer needed. Nice. Okay, so that's number one done. And then we come back here. And... Yeah, so I think this is called, what is this called? Sum I'm going to say the Samarium, Samarium, Samarium slash Ansible. And we've got this run Ansible playbook. So here we've got playbook.yaml. And it looks like in here we have this test command, who am I? 
So hopefully, so if we run this, if this runs like a who am I commands, then maybe we can edit this and then run shell commands on the title. Oh, that looks like it flashed red. Maybe something didn't work. Let me try it again. Waiting. Oh, success. Okay. Uh, logs. STD out. Yeah, okay, so standard out was bismuth. Okay, so let's verify this because maybe we have command execution, but maybe not. Um, maybe it's not like being pushed or committed or there's going to be like, we're going to get blocked and it needs to be like approved, something like this. Um, let's do uh, LS. That's probably a good, uh, let's do commit changes. I'm being a really good dev and not adding comments to my commits. <laughs> that's the, that's what you should always do. Add comments. Let's see if this runs again. Oh. <laughs> when should you keep an eye on your cheese when it's up to no Gouda? It's kind of funny because in the UK, we say Gouda for some stupid reason, even though like everybody else says Gouda and, you know, being in um, uh, like being in the Netherlands, they're like, oh, yeah, it's Gouda. But uh, this is a good joke. I always appreciate a good, uh, a good, a good cheese joke. Um, did this work? Oh, look, we got flag 2.txt. That's the only thing in the folder. Interesting. OK, so let's see if we can. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, so hopefully you can all see it. Let's edit this again. We might have to put quotes. Maybe we need quotes. Maybe we don't. We'll see. Flag, please, commit. Yeah, that looks like a flag. Okay, let's take this. Hopefully it's not going to be like invalid flag. Two flags down. Nicely done. Um, yeah, nice. Nothing too crazy so far, so that's good. Um, let's try and get a shell. Oh, yeah. I, all right, so I have all my links here, right? Where's my YouTube? Oh, there it is. All right, if you want to check out my, it's this, this is my YouTube channel. I'm 24 subscribers, big time YouTuber, obviously with 24 subscribers. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna be doing, I've, I've moved, started moving all my stuff over. So I'll be doing a little bit more live streaming on, on YouTube, just ad hoc stuff when I find the time. Should be streaming Friday, we'll see. Only because somebody was asking earlier. Um, let's close this, let's close this, and let's open this. Um, let's come to payloads, all the things. Oh, I wanted that reverse shell cheat sheet. Ah, it was on Google, this is what I want. All right, we should actually just bookmark this and put it on the... Uh, on the bookmarks bar. There we go. Easy to get to in future. Um, how do we want to do this? Okay, so we've got bash. Um, let's try... Let's see if we have Python. And then we'll try a payload. Bam. Okay, so we've got user bin Python 3. Okay, cool. So let's try Python. Let's put this in here. And then let's go to IPA. 
grab this IP address. Do four 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 four. Uh, four 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 four. Yeah, it's probably fine. Let's change this to Python three. And let's try this. Edits. Poof. Commits. And then netcat and a VP four 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 four. And let's see if we can get a shell. All right. So while that's doing that. Let's see. Um, oh, when am I going to hit analysis? I think tomorrow. I have a little bit of time tomorrow evening. Um, so, which will be like lunchtime for you. So if, if, you're, if you're around tomorrow lunchtime and you want to hit up analysis for a bit, I saw that you got the user flag. Um, and then we can, then we can uh, take a look. Um, also, what else was I going to say? Yeah, so um, Arubius does like Sunday hack the box things. So if you're interested, hit him up on the TCM Discord and pester him with messages. Don't ping people though, because that's against the rules. But maybe you can drop into off topic and be like, hey, I want to know more about the um, season four hack the box squad, the study squad. And then uh, he'll give you the details uh, for sure. I think it's worth, uh, worth checking. Oh, look at that. We've got a shell. Nice. Uh, dash C. Nice. Okay. Um, oh, there's dot SSH. Yeah. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Okay. We can maybe upgrade our shell if we just steal this SSH key. Let's grab this private key. And then in here, let's just vim id rsa, steal this, chmod 600 id rsa, ssh, this at, what's the IP? It's going to give me HTTP, isn't it? No, it's not. We're good. Uh, dash i id rsa. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Okay, no messing around with um, terrible shells. We can, uh... well, we already submitted flag two, but we got a shell, so we're happy. We're in. That's the uh, that's the main thing. Um, what is going on here? X Y X. Let's um, I don't know. Let's put you in timeout. Chill out. Um. Do, 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 do. And let me scroll up a little bit. So I've missed a ton of messages. So, um, ah, the, the only subscription I need. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> All good. Yeah, we'll have we'll have some um, some shenanigans um, for sure on uh, on every stream. Why not? Whichever is all good. The more the merrier. Um, how do we want to do this? Let's have a little poke around first. So we've got this user here. So we're this person. We obviously want to be root. I didn't see any other interesting users. I don't know what this pollinate is. And I don't know what this landscape is. It's slightly odd. Um, let's see, the, see if there's anything opt. Oh, contain con, container D. No. Okay. Uh, 
weird permissions on temp. Very strange. Let's run Limpies and see what we find. I think that's the safest way forward. So if I come into scripts, um, IPA, Python 3 dash M HTTP dot server 80. Ah, uh, let's do 8081. Since my address is already in use, there you get this 8081 limpies.sh. Let's see what's going on. chmod plus x limpies dot slash. Let's see what happens. I think the real trick to OSCP is doing a lot of proving grounds. Like once you've done the material and you've spent a fair about matter, a fair about amount, I can't even talk, a fair amount of time in the labs. So like, let's say you've done like 50 public labs boxes or 60 or whatever. Um, I can't remember exactly how many I solved, but um, it, it definitely wasn't all of them, but it was the majority of the public lab and then some other boxes and some of the other networks. Um, once you've done that, spend a lot of time doing proving grounds boxes, like the easy and medium boxes. I think that's the best way to go, uh, in my opinion. Proving grounds is like similar style to the exam, so because they're built by uh, machines like published by Offsec. So, so I think that's my best tip I can give you. All right, um, let me scroll up and see what we found. So Limpies thinks that, okay, so these are writable paths. <laughs> slash home bismuth slash bin dot local slash bin. So Maybe if there's a process or a cron job running that's um, using the same environments, so if root has these in their environments and they're going to them, then maybe we can overwrite them. We're going to have to check for cron jobs, or maybe we can just run um, process spy, PSPY. That's probably a good way to go. And we can have a look at that. Otherwise, what else do we have? Just like random kernel exploits as usual. We got some containers. What's up here? My cat's like scratching my. I don't know if you can see her that well, but she's like. Oops. Just rolling on her back. Being, uh, being a cat, enjoying life, the spoiled cat. Um, EC2 stuff is probably not what we're after. Okay, I do want to have a look here though, because running processes, I want to look for odd processes running as a route that might have a similar path that we can write to. Hey, hey you, watch those claws. Hey, 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 calm down. She's like, just like chewing my elbow, no big deal. <laughs> Your claws are sharp here, yeah? calm down. She just wants attention. Um, What else do we have? Hmm. Sorry, I, I'm not very good at talking while scrolling down the Linpy's output. It like requires all my brain power, <laughs> all of my chat buffers for a minute while I'm while I'm doing this, and then and then we'll take a look. Uh, we didn't look at these ports, so they might be worth checking out. They didn't come up on our initial scans. Uh, 
So here we have the um, ADM group, um, which I think lets us read things like um, log files for uh, like Apache and Nginx and maybe some other sensitive files. So this might be something worth thinking about if we need to read some sensitive files. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that gives us that permission. I can't really remember off the top of my head. I might have to Google. God, there's so much to get through. Uh, there's also, we might be looking for click text credentials within the web applications and the config files and database and stuff like that. And this is the SSH key we already stole. Uh, okay. Let's speed up because there's usually not that much exciting stuff at the bottom. Okay, let's run PSPY and see whether we have something running that we can hijack. I think that's the, the next logical step given um, given what we saw. Uh, so we have PSPY64 here in our scripts folder. If you need it, you can just Google process by, you'll find the GitHub. Um, so wget, oh, whet. Let me just actually just scroll up and then we'll just grab this. chmod plus x PSPY. If you're on a limited shell, by the way, and you can't control C because that will kill your shell, um, a good one to use is the timeout command. So you can timeout. I think it's timeout like 300, and then you can just do like PSPY, for example. But since we're on, um, we've got like a stable shell. We don't have to worry about it too much. So I'm just going to run this and see whether anything pops up. And while that's running, um, uh, we can just chat, I suppose. <laughs> oh, good. How much time uh, does it take to learn Kali Linux? I feel like, like to get to grips with Kali doesn't take that long. But like learning about ethical hacking and pen testing is a... Uh, is, uh, never-ending journey and um, getting the fundamentals down doesn't take like super long time but you'll always be learning new things so you just got to be curious and enjoy the journey for sure um, you're just breaking into bug bounty what is some low-hanging fruit you can be checking for um i would say broken objects level authorization or idor so idor slash bola when we're talking about apis we call it bola when we're talking about normal applications, we call it IDOR, Insecure Direct Object Reference, um, and broken function level authorizations. So for example, when you update your account, um, it might be like, hey, ID123, and you might um, update your account. Can you update different accounts, for example? So broken access controls um, are really, really common um, in API-driven applications, and more and more applications are being built with APIs. So I would say 100%, that's probably going to be your biggest finding. That and cross-site scripting, I think, are the two most common, but actual real issues, um, uh, real findings that are going to get payouts, I think. Um, I did some videos on those, actually, uh, if I recall. If we come back to YouTube, hold on. If we come back to TCM YouTube. Did I do Um a cyber mentor. It's one of my older videos, so um, here we are. <laughs> you can see that the, uh, I don't know, like my whole setup's a bit different, but, um, but yeah, broken object level authorization and some of the other videos I did like broken function level authorization. Oh yeah, look here, Lentac web apps, Bola, broken auth. These are things that you'll find a lot in bug bounty. So, so I think that's your best Best bet if you want to maximize your, like, you know, initial, uh, your time, for sure. All right, let's see what's going on on this box. Um, this is all us. Ansible stuff. Oh, yeah, this is Ansible. Okay. Ansible playbook. Interesting that 
this is being run. So the Ansible playbook, user bin Ansible playbook. And then root to Ansible playbook bot dot yammer. I think this is just the file. Should probably check this out. I'm not super familiar. It's been a long time since I looked at Ansible. And then sh dash c get root Ansible pull. Okay. That's fine. We don't see anything too exciting with our writable path. Um, hmm. I thought we'd see like a custom script running. But let me let me see what this is. Oops. Oh, and that goes to Ansible. Okay. Yeah. Um Okay. Um Hmm. Did we overlook something? I'm gonna have a quick look at Suid Enum as well. Do I have this script? Yes we do. Suid three num dot pi. See if we can find this is a useful little suit. I mean, I know you can use the find command to get like um, uh, binaries with the suit bit set, but this one does like a check against GTFO bins and like highlights them and stuff. So like, you know, these are all the suit binaries from the scripts, which is quite cool. And then it's like, these are default binaries that always have the sewed bit set. So there's no point really in looking at them unless there's a really good reason to. And then, yeah, we've got custom ones and, and nothing here. Okay, interesting. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, so usually on easy boxes, it's not really a big deal. Um, but if you, I think by default, like Windows, for example, if you try and use a port like 4444, it's not going to let the traffic flow. Um, if you have like Defender or something running like this, um, or if it's been configured. So usually what I try and do is I try and catch shells, at least when I'm not doing like, you know, um, CTFs, or if I don't get a shell um, immediately, um, I'll try and use a port where traffic is allowed to flow. So like port 80 or 22 or something like this. Um, and if you remember, so like, obviously like SSH is running on 22. Um, and if we're binding to port 22, it's gonna flow um, to the remote destination 22. So it's not gonna interfere with the service, um, but it's more likely that traffic is allowed to flow over that port. And so it's kind of like a bad habit that I use 4444 so often, <laughs> but, um, but yeah. Oh yeah, same as same as four four three like this. Yeah, so four four three is is good as well. Um, but any anything like if you can't get a shell, you come back to your um, like your scan and have a look at what ports are open, and then try all of the ports where services are um, uh, that are using, and that is usually um, the best way to go, I think. Um, is there a system administrator course in TCM? I don't think so. There's a detection uh, engineering course, but not a system administrator course specifically, uh, unfortunately. So maybe if somebody makes one, we should uh, we should do it for sure. Um, started. Uh, okay, started starting work as a security control system 853. What is 853? What um, what standard is this? Is this a NIST one? Yeah, it's the NIST framework, isn't it? Um, hmm. Any advice for this? I mean, I haven't done uh, things like um, PCI DSS or um, controls assessments in at least a few years, so it's been a while. 
Um, but what I would say is make sure one, you can find the right people to talk to, to gather things like um, feedback and evidence and, and stuff like that. Um, and two, definitely try and stay organized. So as you're doing your controls assessment, um, collect evidence in a single place. Don't kind of keep it all, you know, spread out. If like somebody sends you a spreadsheet, don't then keep another spreadsheet and then another spreadsheet and then other screenshots. Try and keep everything in a central repository. That will make your life much, much easier uh, later on. And if people send you emails and stuff, keep them as evidence. Make sure you save them. Um, you know, because sometimes emails might expire or disappear after 30 days. The mail server might go down. Um, so yeah, keep backups of your stuff. That would be my my general advice. But uh, but yeah, it's been it's been a while uh, for me. But hopefully that helps. Um, do, 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 do. All right. The reason I'm chatting is because I'm not sure what to do with this box now. <laughs> My main thoughts have disappeared, so let's let's poke around a bit more. Um, oops. Sudo has been successful. Is empty. Oh, we didn't do sudo dash l. Don't. Uh, do we have the password? We have a password here, but this is for a different user, but maybe it's the same one. No, we don't. Okay. Interesting here. That's the one that we updated, isn't it? Oh. I'm not sure if there's anything interesting here. Let's just grab this quickly. It's just passing uh, as part of the, the code. Hmm. What about, uh, let's try. What's in our environment? Hold on, hold on. Let's see. These are the right spawns that came up. Hmm. They don't exist. Interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, I had a look for sewage bits earlier with, um, but I didn't find any interesting ones here. Yeah, no custom and none GTFO bins, but yeah, definitely worth checking for sure. Something in var dub dub dub. Let's see, let's see, var dub dub dub. Whoops. Yeah, maybe there's some, um, whoops. Uh, oh my God, I can't type. <laughs> um, we've seen those already. Maybe there's some clear text credentials or something that we're missing. Um, although this would be jokes if this is just the root password. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> but just as a troll one day, you never know. Sometimes that happens. Uh, let's cut mean.js. Nothing interesting in there. Uh, no, there's no 
something really worth looking in there. Maybe it's a kernel exploit. Let me try and see what do we have. Linux exploit suggester. Let's try this. I go all the way up. I probably should just type the IP address, but I'm lazy. I'm just going to use the up key. There we go. <laughs> Found it. Um, Linux exploit suggester. I don't think, I think it's been like six months since we did um, any kernel exploits. Obviously we could, we could like check manually. So here's the kernel version 4.15 running Ubuntu, but um, it's pwn kits. Yeah, maybe we could give that a try. Pwn kits quite popular. Let's see if we can find the binary. Let's do this one. So I'm just going to grab the shell scripts. Uh, oh no, what we actually want to get is, let's just wget. Because I don't want to run it on this PC, obviously. I want to run it on the remote machine. Um, so we want this. And then let's try this. Hopefully it'll work. Let's see. Um, <laughs> yeah, imagine if that worked. It's just like, oh, okay, job done. Bye bye. <laughs> next, next time maybe. What does Control R do? Is this a command that I don't know? Is it gonna trash my shell? Um. What is this? So I grab the hashes from QE, following instructions to run. <laughs> it's okay to vent a little bit. It's all good. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know how to set up GPG though. I've got no clue. Your best bet is probably Stack Overflow, I think. Although ChatGPT also does quite well with, with error messages as well. But... Uh, System administration is, is generally not my strong point. Okay, what's going on here? Am I, have I got a shell? I'm gonna give it another 30 seconds, then we'll try a different one. Also, so when we when we run exploit kits, um, or root kits, or, or sorry, kernel exploits, um, <laughs> trying to get my words out, um, sometimes we can damage the box, which means that if you run three or four, by the time you run one that works, it might not work. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're when you're trying to run kernel exploits. You can you can trash machines uh, for sure. Um, oh, this is a controversial question. I think that's. I mean, it depends where you want to be um, in in cybersecurity. And to be honest, to me, certifications are like diminishing returns. Like you get great return on your first certification. And then you get less return on investment for your second and then less on your third and then less on your fourth, I think. Um, personally, I think like one or two sets is is the way to go. And then and then just worry about side projects, contributions to the community, networking, um, getting experience, stuff like that. That would be my professional opinion or that, that's that's what I do is I don't I don't spend loads of time going for certifications. I do look at like the training and stuff. Um, like I looked at the CRTO um, training and I went through that. Uh, and I also, I'm, I'm like halfway through uh, CBBH as well, just reviewing that. Um, so I think there's value in doing training courses, but for me, like, do I want to do more certifications? I got enough stuff going on. <laughs> I got so many side projects. So, um, but you know, if you want to do like pen testing, I think PMPT, OSCP, I think those are the two like, ones that are worth getting sounds as good if somebody else is paying 
Um, in the web app space, I mean, there's not really a dominant certification yet in the web app space. So dealer's choice, really. Um, I'm going to assume this didn't work. So let's try the next one on the list. Um, pseudo Baron Sam edits. Let's try this. Oh my God, there's so many. Um, also detect all requirements. Okay, try exploit nss.py first. Okay, let's grab this. Let's grab the raw. Let's see if this one works. I think we might just end up going down the list. Who knows? Um, the interesting thing is, though, if one of these does work, it might not be the intended routes because a lot of CTFs are vulnerable to kernel exploits, but that's not always the intended route. But I didn't really find anything else, so I'm not really sure. Um, do I want Python or Python 3? That's the question. Oh, Python 3. It's in the uh, shebang. Oh, <laughs> that's it. We're done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, one day I'm going to write a kernel exploit that just like pops this, um, this little shebang, or this little uh, pound sign or hash or what, depending on what country you come from, you call it different things. And then when people write who am I, it's just going to return roots and then it's going to be like a troll, a troll kernel exploit. But um, uh, this looks like we're good. Oh, where's the root flag there? Ah, it's flag for three. There we go. Got it. Box done. Nice. That was that was pretty fun. I think that is like a really typical easy box, right? So if you're looking to do like easy boxes to kind of like level up your skills, this is like that's what you should expect. So there were hints along the way. We had these web services. Um, we found obviously you need to pay attention to detail because if you didn't, you probably wouldn't have been stuck here, I think. So looking out for this, like little notes and things like that is really important. Or like maybe like you have anonymous access to FTP and there's like there's a note in there or something like this. Um, and also checking source code. Sometimes there's notes in source code as well. And um, just to make the box a little bit more accessible. Um, yeah, those are all things that you should definitely be looking out for. I mean, I would probably have not like checked the metadata on any of these images if I didn't see that as a as a hint. Um, but maybe on a harder box, I might have done because there's less less hints and more more free for all. But um, it's an interesting title. Um, but yeah, that was a cool box. That was pretty fun. I enjoyed that. Um, what is my keyboard? I have a I have a Keychron. Ooh, there you go. That's that's full of cat hair and needs needs cleaning out. But um, it's got cherry reds, but I recommend don't get cherries if you don't have your own office, because if you take it into work, you're going to annoy everyone. Um, so they're pretty loud, um, but they're really nice to type on. So, um, so yeah, that's my um, my keyboard. I do have a few others. I have a Archis from Japan. The layout's obviously like Japanese layout, though, so you have to get used to those keys. Um, and then I think I gave away another one. I can't remember what it was. It wasn't a Keychron, it was something else. And I built a keyboard a few years back, but then it broke. And I think I have the moon thing. Hold on. Where is it? All right, so I'm actually a really big fan of, moon, of split keyboards, but you know what I'm not a fan of? Um, column keys. So on a on a normal keyboard, hold on, let me switch to like the um, full cam. 
on a normal keyboard, the keys, like you learn to type and the keys are like offset. But these things, like they're in a vertical row. So you actually have to relearn to type on them. And so whilst I really like this, um, uh, this keyboard, there's obviously like another panel here. And I love the shortcut keys and the thumb key. Um, learning to retype is a nightmare. Not worth it at all. I mean, after six months, I was like, screw it. I'm, like, I'm just so much faster on a normal keyboard. And I kept making so many mistakes. And you see how many like mistakes I make typing normally. So imagine even more, um, even more mistakes. So not worth it at all. Hello, good morning, Pops. You are right there? <laughs> She's just, just chilling. So um, if you do see a split keyboard, make sure it doesn't have like straight column keys because honestly, it's not worth the effort. Um, so um, yeah, I did manage to get root. So basically it was pretty straightforward. We just used this um, exploits, um, which was this same edit, Sam edits. So we ran, um, um, Linux exploit suggester, which comes in as les, good old les. Um, so it just gives us the kernel version, the architecture, etc., etc. And then I just started, so pwn kit didn't work. Um, although there are a few different uh, types, so maybe we could try a different binary, maybe it would work. Um, and then this second one, uh, pseudo baron sum edits, uh, worked. And then if that didn't work, we'd probably just keep working down the list. Um, and you can see like here, it gives us probable. This one's less probable, less probable. Um, maybe there's a way to like, somebody should write like an exploit testing script that gets all of like the main ones in a nice bundle and then just tries them one after the other. Could be nice for CTFs. Probably not good for a production system though, because probably just going to crash the system. But yeah, all good. Um, all right, so let's take... Uh, a couple more question and a couple more questions and then we'll we'll f wrap up uh, for for today and then tomorrow I'm gonna be working on uh, working on what's it called uh, let's see Let's see where we are. It's kind of nice to start doing Hack the Box again. Oh no, I don't want to show. Oh no, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, hold on, I'm signing into Hack the Box, but I can't remember my uh, password. What is it? Can somebody break my account and tell me my password? That would be nice. Oh no, it's actually a really terrible password. <laughs> um, it's an old password that I need to change. Um, where are we? Oh, season four. Here we are. So tomorrow, oh my God, it's just all the pop-ups. Yeah, we're going to be working on analysis. So this is this week's challenge. Don't don't give me any spoilers, but if you have hints for me, you can, you can throw me some hints. And then uh, if you're interested in doing some boxes, Hit up Arubius and um, and uh, oh yeah, this is my password. Th thank you for the reminder. <laughs> um, and then uh, yeah, come join us on Sunday. I should be around Sunday. Uh, what am I doing Sunday? I think it's my niece's birthday. But when I get back, I'll be on for sure. So um, so all good. Should be fun. Um, all right, and that's it for today's stream. So say goodbye to pops. Come on, pops. You say goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, I know. She's going to be happy. I'm going to feed her soon. And she's going to go start running around like a crazy cat. Um, but yeah, thanks for everybody for tuning in. And uh, as always, thanks for the team, Adriana, and people behind the scenes uh, banning people and muting the... the uh, <laughs> The, uh, the spammers, it's always much appreciated. Sorry about the music at the beginning. Um, I will put some effort into uh, getting that fixed so that we can have um, a stream that's not deafening and then we're, we're all good. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Tibbs, um, which is starts around about this time tomorrow in like 20, 20 minutes or so. So it's like 2 p.m. ET, 
which is 7 p.m. in the UK and, and I don't know, other times elsewhere in the world. Um, so yeah, hopefully see you all tomorrow for Tibbs' stream and I'll catch you all next week. Thanks, everyone.